This is a fast-paced but comprehensive guide to fixing Joy-Con drift. It shows 12 methods for you to try, each with increasing difficulty. You should start with method 1, and if that doesn't work, go to method 2, and so forth. Work your way through the list until your problem is solved, or you reach the end of your comfort level. Note that some methods build on previous ones, so I advise you don't skip around to different sections. The first thing to try is to run updates on your Joy-Cons. It's a long shot, but it's easy to do. First, make sure you have the latest system update installed. Then just follow the menu path I have on the screen to run the controller updates. The next thing to try is to resync the Joy-Con. It's another long shot. Put the switch in sleep mode, then press the power button to wake it up. Then reset the Joy-Con by pressing the tiny round sync button once. Then press any other button on the controller. You probably already did this, but use the menu path shown on the screen to calibrate your Joy-Con. If you attempt any of the upcoming methods, you should also consider recalibrating after each one. Sometimes the drift is caused by dirt getting underneath the stick, so dislodging the dirt can help. There's a rubbery hood at the bottom of the stick that covers an opening. You need to flip the hood up, and if possible, find a way to keep it up. You can use a broken paper clip, a twister seal, or a roll of paper. Don't experiment too much, because the hood is a bit fragile, and if you move it around repeatedly, it may tear off. Once you have that hole opened, turn the controller around and tap it on the back for 3 minutes. Hopefully this will cause debris to fall out. If you hold it above a bright surface, you may be able to see something come out. Another way to attack dirt is to open the hood as shown in method 4, but this time take some isopropyl alcohol and a flattened q-tip and clean the area underneath. I suggest you make sure a few drops get down inside the controller. Move the stick around, then retest. As an alternative to alcohol, you can use a little bit of electronic contact cleaner. Don't use regular WD-40 or any other types of chemicals that are not labeled as contact cleaners. If you like what I'm doing in this video, hit the like button. Yet another way to clean is to blow air inside the stick. You can use a straw with a flattened end and just insert it under the hood and blow. You can do the same with canned air. Just make sure you don't tilt the can or it'll spray chemicals inside. This is a very common mistake that people make with canned air. You need to hold it upright. You can also pin the hood open and use a hair dryer on the cold setting. Don't blow heat into it. If you use the straw method, it's a good idea to also use the hair dryer afterward to evaporate any saliva that may have accumulated inside the stick. Open the hood as shown in method 4 and apply suction with a vacuum cleaner nozzle. Don't use full suction. If there's a ring like this one on the nozzle, move it so the holes are open, which will weaken the suction. You just don't want to get too carried away. You may just end up sucking wires out of your controller. To take it a step further, incorporate some tapping in between the suctioning. This is the last method you can try that doesn't involve taking the controller apart. If you take it apart, you may void your warranty. So method 8 is to send it to Nintendo to be repaired. They have a repair website for the US and Canada, joyconrepair.nintendo.com, which will allow you to mail them your Joy-Con. According to sources, they will fix it for free regardless of the warranty status. But double check with them. Something to keep in mind is that they may end up sending back a different Joy-Con than the one you sent in. Now we need to go inside the controller and insert some cardboard. Disclaimer, taking apart your Joy-Con is risky. You may break it or make the problem worse. I'm going to do my best to give you details that will reduce that risk, but I can't lower it to zero. Leaving the battery connected and charged while you go inside the controller can short out the electronics. The safest way to proceed is to drain the battery first. This will also allow you to avoid disconnecting the battery later in the process, which is good because the battery connector breaks easily. To drain, make sure the Joy-Con isn't mechanically connected to the side of the switch. Find a spot in the game that's safe for your character to move, and stuff a Q-tip underneath the stick to make the character move. Or the camera move, or something like that. You can also try doing this on a game menu or something. 
This will take a while. If you're really impatient, you can pair your Joy-Con to a PC and go to the website called Gamepad Tester and click the vibration button over and over again. You can also download Free Mouse Auto Clicker and have it automatically click the vibrate button. Note this may cause long-term damage to the motor, so you may want to space out the auto clicks to be two or three seconds apart. Note there are internal differences in the left and right Joy-Cons. I will point out the differences as I instruct you throughout the video. So once again, I advise against skipping around the video. Start by taking off the wrist strap, if it's still on there. Then find a tri-wing screwdriver. You can easily find them on Amazon. Just look up the term switch tri-wing screwdriver. Note you will only need this for the outside screws, the one inside the controller to take a more standard type of screwdriver. Before turning the screws, you need to loosen them up a little bit because they're really tight and you don't want to strip them. Drop one drop of water on each one. And as it's soaking, tap each screw. Also clean out any dirt you see around the screw. After five minutes, take a Q-tip and swab out the excess water. This will further clean the area. Once it's dry, proceed with removing the four screws. Separate the two halves carefully, a plastic knife can be used. I also have this separator I got off Amazon. Some people may be able to separate with just their hands. When you get enough separation, carefully open it like a book, with the spine of the book being the side with the metal that hooks onto the switch. We do this because there's some ribbons connecting the two halves. So far there's no differences in this process between the right and left Joy-Cons. Next, pry the battery out. It's usually held in with some sticky tape, so at first it seems like it's not going to budge. If you drained the battery, just lay it off to the side, still connected. If it's not drained, you can disconnect it if you want, but for many people they end up breaking the connector in the process, and they ruin their controller. So I'm not even going to show you how to disconnect it. If you did not drain or disconnect, you could still move forward with this process, but you run the risk of shorting something out since there's still electricity in the battery. Next, you'll need to remove some more screws using a tiny Phillips screwdriver. This is where there's some differences between the left and right Joy-Con, so please pay attention. For the left Joy-Con, you will only take three of the five screws out that you see. Notice two screws are deeper than the others. Those are the ones you want to leave in place. Just remove the other three. They are loose, so there's no need to do the water and the tapping like you did earlier. For the right Joy-Con, you'll first need to remove the NFC chip that's tucked in there, and just let it hang. Remove the three screws located in the corners. The rest of this disassembly is the same for the left and right Joy-Cons. Pry the plastic layer up and turn it to the side, slowly like a book since it's connected by a small ribbon. Now you're all the way in. If this trigger button fell out, put it back in. Make sure the spring is inside this tiny compartment. You may also want to clean around that button because there tends to be some dirt there. Be prepared because this button will likely fall out multiple times as you're working with this video. This silver square is the back of the stick, and we're going to lay cardboard across it. This will cause extra pressure to be applied to the stick, which for some people will resolve their drift. I'm cutting a square out of a business card, and I made it slightly smaller than the square I'm laying it on top of. Your cardboard needs to be pretty thin, so if you don't have a business card, try to find a food box in your cabinet or something. Nintendo is aware of this resolution, and on newer controllers, they have put their own padding in that functions the same way as the cardboard. If you see this padding, you need to use really thin cardboard. In fact, you may just want to add two layers of paper. If Nintendo has the padding there and you lay on thick cardboard, the controller is going to be too fat to put back together. There's no need to glue or tape it down. You're just going to close things up, and that's going to keep the cardboard in place. This plastic layer may have got twisted around, so make sure the ribbon is going out through this gap that's shaped like a triangle. Lay the piece back into place and put the screws back in, and put the battery back into place. For the left Joy-Con, you'll need to put the NFC chip back inside the holder that's next to the battery. Its little wires need to be tucked into the groove. From here, everything should go back together. Test and see if it worked.
If the cardboard didn't work, the next step would be to go back in and just replace the stick. Replacements are easy to find on Amazon. Disclaimer, this is more complex than the last method. It involves disconnecting some tiny fragile ribbon cable. I'm going to give you as many pointers as possible to lower the risk for you, but the risk will never be zero. Disassemble the Joy-Con as described in method 9, all the way until you can take the cardboard off. From here on, the process will be different for the left and right Joy-Cons. For the left, you'll need to remove the two screws holding the stick. One of those is under a ribbon, so you'll need to disconnect that ribbon. Look carefully to see if there's a little gate on the connector that holds that ribbon in. If so, flick it into the up position. Some people claim they don't have this gate, or the gate is already up. To make sure, I suggest getting your phone out and using the camera to magnify the area and see if you have the gate. If the gate isn't there, just keep proceeding with this process. I'm still talking about the left Joy-Con here. Now you need to disconnect another ribbon, the one leading to the stick itself. For this one, the gate is on the other side of the connector, but it functions the same way. If you do have this gate, flick it into the up position. Pull both ribbons out of the connectors. If you don't have a gate, I'm thinking you can just pull the ribbon out, but please proceed with caution. For the right Joy-Con, you only need to disconnect one ribbon, the one leading to the stick. Do it the same way as I just described for the left Joy-Con. Remove the two screws holding the stick. Push the stick from beneath until it comes out. There's this material around the hole, make sure it stays in place. And it's a good idea to clean the area. You should see some dirt in there. Put the new stick in and put the screws in place. Put the ribbons back in and take your time doing it. Maybe find someone with small fingers. It's hard to get the end of the ribbons into the little slits, but just keep doing slight movements until it happens. Once again, you can use your camera phone to magnify the area and get a better look. Close the gates, if you have them, and reassemble the controller as I showed in method 9. This is a high risk method and is really only for those who don't want to order a replacement stick. It involves going deep inside the existing stick and cleaning it. You may break the parts that are inside the stick, which happened to me one time out of two attempts. Note that even if the stick breaks in the process, you can still just order a new one and replace it as shown in method 10. So there is merit in trying to do this method. Disassemble the controller as shown in method 9 and remove the stick as shown in method 10. With the stick in hand, examine the four sides. You'll see many hinges holding it together. Start prying those hinges, little by little in small increments. Note that the main problem here is that those hinges are fragile. They can tear off easily. Keep attempting to get separation. As you pry it open, make sure the silver metal part is facing up and the black plastic part is facing down. Keep it that way as you open the whole thing. Note that you may have another version of the stick, but the same principles apply. There's a spring inside that's probably going to fall out. You can just put that aside for now. With it open, continue to keep the black part facing down. There are tiny parts inside that can fall out, and it's a pain to get them back in, but not impossible. You may want to take a photo with your phone before they fall out, that way you know how they go back in. There are three black pads. Clean them with isopropyl alcohol. Also clean out any other debris you see inside. Now comes the hardest part of this video, putting the two halves back together. The membrane that you cleaned probably fell out. Getting it back into place is tricky. There's a small notch that needs to go underneath this hinge here. Make sure you don't have the membrane facing down as I do right here. The three black pads need to face up. Put the spring into place. The larger end of it needs to be sitting on the black side. Then squeeze the two pieces back together. Make sure the metal hinges line up with the proper indentations on the black plastic side.
On my original try, I broke off two of these metal hinges, and that was enough to keep it from going back together. It's possible you may break one, but still be able to make it go back together. You could possibly put some tape to hold it together. The second attempt I made on another stick was successful. There's still a little bit of separation, but it worked 100% when I put it back in the Joy-Con and tested it. If you can get it closed, reinsert it into the Joy-Con and put everything back together as described in the previous methods. This next method is 100% effective at getting rid of drift. Go in and remove the battery from the controller by clipping its wires. Put it back together and put it on the floor. A concrete floor works best. Get yourself a steel tamper like this one. They can be found at some of the big box hardware stores. Line up the tamper so that it's right above the controller. And then... This controller will never drift again, but just to make sure, send it to Nintendo to have them take a look. I got a little crazy near the end there, but hopefully you found it cathartic. If you want to see me demolish another controller, watch this video where I showed 12 ways to resolve drift on a DualShock 4. This has been a Gaming the Systems production. Enjoy your games, and at the same time help make this a better world. So long everybody.